preparation, use those jelly prints. An art journal page, be thankful. Using a collage technique, jelly prints, and old folk art patterns. So here are some of my large jelly prints and some of my other small ones arranged by color. Once upon a time, before I got into art journaling and watercolor, I did folk art, painting on wood. And I have tons of these books, all waiting to be either thrown out or used. So I decided that I'm going to use these and use the collage technique. I'm not someone who can draw yet, so I'm going to revert back to tracing an existing pattern that, that I already have. So I'm just tracing with a pen the entire scarecrow picture. Then I'm going to use this graphite paper, shiny side down, and I'm going to trace over the pattern again. And I've selected different colors of jelly prints that I want to use for each part of this scarecrow. You can't really see on the camera the pattern, but it's there and I'll be able to cut everything out. Now I didn't have to do all the pieces with jelly print. You could do part or some, um, just depending on what you want to use. And I'm not even sure at this point what I'm going to use. I'm thinking the pumpkins are part of this, but I'm not thinking that I'm going to use them later on. And mainly I'm interested in tracing the um, outlines, not the internal. So this is my Canson art journal. And so I'm just assembling my little scarecrow here that's cut out from the jelly prints. And I'm blanking how it is, and I decide I'm going to cut out the sign, and so I do that as well. Now, looking at the colors that I have in my scarecrow, I'm using my color wheel to decide on the colors that I'm going to put in the background. And they say that you should pick five colors that are analogous on the color wheel. And if you go to the back of the color wheel, it shows that. So that's what you saw me doing moment just a few minutes ago. I'm gessoing the page and then drawing it. So I'm just applying a couple shades of blue and a couple a shade of yellow. Adding a little bit of water to make the acrylic paint go on a little bit easier. I'm not looking for it to mix and blend completely. I want to see the different colors and shades in there. Just adding a little bit more here and there where it seems to have lifted. Adding some darker blues into the sky as well as some aqua. And these are colors that are in the um, jelly prints that I've used. So I want it to kind of be very cohesive. You see the pants really go well with the blue and the hat is yellow, like the yellow in the bottom. So once this is dry, I'm taking my Liquitex Basics and I have brown there. A shade of brown, I think it was burnt umber. And I mix it with a little bit of iridescent medium and I'm using the Stamp Pendus Cube Stamp. And this has foliage on it and I want it to kind of look fall like and the very harvest like. So now I'm taking burnt umber and mixing it up with the rest of that and I'm going over it because I wanted a little bit more contrast and so you get the two different colors and the depth. You can see the pattern a little bit more. Always, always, always use um, clean your stamps after you apply acrylic paint in them and I just play, spray water with uh, soap detergent in it and I clean them right away. 
So here's my script stamp and I'm going to use Prussian blue. It's a dark blue. Uh, and I'm just applying it with a makeup sponge and pressing it on just to add a little bit of interest and layering to the sky. I'm using a stencil brush here, an old stencil brush to clean the fine um, stamp so I get rid of all that acrylic paint. So reassembling my little guy. Now I'm going to trace on where he is going to be using the graphite paper. This was a technique and I'm not sure where I saw it, but the person had traced it on and then did the shading around where the collage pieces were going to make it a little easier later on. So all the shading is done now. And to do the shading, I am using an Inktense block. It is a um, dark brown black. And I'm activating it with water and smudging it with my finger to get that sh shading effect. I'm applying some white gesso on the face and hands so I can go later over top of them kind of in a flesh color. So now I'm just making sure that everything is going to cover properly. And my outline was a little bit off, so I'm just going to have to readjust with the colors at this stage. So I'm using my golden matte medium as an adhesive. And I decide because I was a little off that I need to start at the bottom and some of it cannot be overlapped. And I'm putting the gel medium on underneath it and as well on top of it. You'll see that sun doesn't make the final cut. I decided not to use it. So got the met. I'm having a little bit of trouble getting the hat on. I didn't cut it quite right. A little more shading, I'm liquefying and activating the ink tense block there and smudging it a little bit more now that my color's there. And I'm applying some kind of flesh color tone, a little pink, a little gray, a little, I'm not sure what colors I mixed up. It's trial and error till it looked right. Um, you just using the ink tense block and wetting my liner brush and then going around just to give it make it pop a little patch for my scarecrow and a little bit more using the ink tense block and water on the liner brush just adding the pop color so these pumpkins uh, while they were orange, I didn't really like the way they were looking. They were a little too busy, a little too bold of a pattern. So I'm just using a couple colors of my Inktense blocks and scribbling over top of it and like activating it with the wa with water and then just painting the leaves and stem with acrylic paints. adding some of the details, the line work that was on there, and activating with water, all with my Inktense blocks. Now, if you didn't have Inktense blocks, you can use the Inktense pencils or watercolor pencils. And for the shading, you can use your Stabilo All Pencil. The shading, you could also use a black gelato if that's what you have. So there's many options available to you. Don't feel like you have to go out and get a specific thing because there's lots of products that basically do the same, can be used for the same thing. Using the liner brush and the ink tense block to highlight or to shadow the pumpkins. I didn't like the jelly print on the shoes. I wanted a little darker black to somehow ground my picture, adding the face to the scarecrow with a micron pen. And it's got kind of a little bit of sketchy um, print on there, just adding some details and line work. 
this just helped make the whole thing pop. Adding a little bit of details here and there as I see fit. Kind of this, this is like the doodling. So the scarecrow was having a, um, was holding a sign, and I was unsure if I wanted to use the sign or not. I thought, okay, I'm going to paint it. So I painted it using my um, Artist Loft Gold paint. And I believe I actually ended up painting both sides because I had put the paint on the wrong side. And I'm transferring, there you go, there I'm painting the other side and getting it right. It probably wouldn't have mattered, but sometimes I just can't let go. So I'm just applying the, trans, the lettering that was in the, in the pattern book. I could have typed out a different font with my computer word program, but I decided I like this one and I went with this. And to tie into the Prussian blue that's there, I use the Prussian blue and I'm applying it with a liner brush. Now the paint has been thinned to the kind of the consistency of thick or thin cream. And I'm just following the tracing of it. Not, ex not too exact. giving it a quick dry trying it out with my little scarecrow deciding to add a little bit of sketchy line work here and outlining it. Using the Inktense block that I used before just to give it a little bit of shading. And applying it with the gel medium. There was a little bit of a, there was a scarecrow that was on his shoulder or on the sign and I decided that, yeah, I needed that little bit of black again, a little more, another detail. So I just used my Liquitex Basics black and yellow. For the crow. using the stylus to make the eyes with white first and then black. Of course, I'm impatient, so I didn't dry the white first. And of course, it, you can't get as big a blob of black that you would like. Shading around the sign just to get a little bit more and then I decided to get my teal intense block out and I'm just darkening the, the circles and with water on my in the palm of my hand I'm just liquefying activating the intense block and just adding making it a little bit making the teal a little bit bolder That's what I love the intense blocks. You can go on top of acrylic paint, you can go on top of the gel medium, you can add it to, you know, color white paper, anything. They can go at any le level. And as you know, I do love my intense blocks. If you haven't watched my videos, um, extensive intense, check out the playlist on all the various uses of the intense blocks. So there's my finished product. It's a bit of a different approach than what I've done before, but it's quite, quite nice and I'm quite happy with the end result. I 
shaded around the edge. Thank you for watching. Take the time to hit the subscribe button. As always, I love to read your comments.